Good morning, good afternoon. This is Oscar from Underdog. Today I want to talk about polyrhythms. Sometimes my students come to me with a loop that's a bit boring, it's a bit stale. It always repeats over and over and over again. And then I want to tell them, yeah, just research what a polyrhythm is and just use it, you know. Um, then you check out what's on the internet and actually all the other explanations are really freaking technical and they start from like a music theory point of view and not from a uh, point of view of like how do i just use this in my dance music to spice it up so that's what i'm going to do today i'm going to tell you really quickly how to do it in to make a simple polyrhythm and what's that going to do for you it's going to make your boring loop endlessly listenable it's going to become a spicy thing that makes every single repetition of your drum or percussion loop or whatever it is that you're making it's going to make it endlessly uh, refreshed because all the elements will continually renew themselves compared to each other. Sounds pretty ambitious, right? I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Let's go. <laughs> all right, imagine the following. Imagine you have yourself a boring loop. Uh, I made the most basic possible beat that I could with Ableton's drum rack and let's play it. Okay, it's getting stale really quickly, right? It's because there's no new information coming in there at all. It just always is the same thing. And you can listen to that once or twice or three times or four times, but not five times, six times, seven times. The brain really needs more stimulation than that. So um, you could, of course, layer a whole bunch of instruments on top of there and make a fully fleshed out production. Um, but I just want to show you one simple trick. And that one simple trick is um, to include a polyrhythm. And a polyrhythm, what is it? Well, a polyrhythm is just a loop whose length is not a simple multiple of the one bar that the rest of your loop is. If the rest of your loop is one bar, two bars, three bars, four bars, well, a polyrhythm is a loop who is some other length than that. So it doesn't always repeat when the first loop repeats. Let me show you this in practice. Imagine I take this basic beat and I multiply it a couple of times. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate. Let's do it eight times. So that's seven, eight. Now let's add a polyrhythm. So how would you do that? Well, let's make a clip that's not one bar long. Insert MIDI clip. And I've just got a simple 808 rim shot loaded up here, and I'm just going to trigger it at the start of this, of this loop. Okay, that's what it sounds like, the little blick. And when I duplicate this, you'll see that whenever this first loop turns back to its first part at the start of the bar, this loop has already started a bit earlier and it ends halfway through the next bar and it ends in a, even again a different place in the next bar. So every single time that this first bar repeats itself, this other element starts at a different place in it. You're going to see now, let's, let's see what this sounds like when you listen to the entire thing, okay? Already, things are getting a little bit more interesting because your brain is figuring out that there is some kind of secondary pattern going on here that's not just always repeating along with the first loop. We can try a few different lengths here and see how they feel. To do this, what I'm going to suggest is that we just create a MIDI clip that's one bar long. We set the grid to 1 16th. We put our rim shot on the first beat and then we play with how long the loop brace is down here. As you can see up here, whenever I move the loop brace short enough, it already starts repeating multiple times. So imagine the following. Imagine we make a polyrhythm that's this long. And I'm just going to stretch out the loop to be this long. So let's have a look. How long is this actually? Well, this is one, two, three, four, five, six sixteenth notes. All right, let's give that a listen.
that sounded pretty entertaining. And you could keep listening to that for a long, long, long time before your ear really gets bored with it. So certainly your basic loop is spiced up with something that, the, that gives more uh, problem-solving challenges to your ear, let's say. Now, let me make this shorter, even shorter. See what 3 16 feels like. Not bad, huh? Now let's try 5 16 This is also an interesting pattern. I found this less attractive than the previous two, but if you mix this in low enough in the mix, it could really spice things up. Now you don't only need to do this on a percussion sample. I just did this because an 808 rim shot is a very good thing to be able to figure out the rhythm of things, but uh, you can also do this with a synthesizer, for instance. So le let's hear what that sounds like. Now, as you can see, you don't need that much more than this to keep something very entertaining. And I want to show you a couple of examples how this is used in real life by artists that you may or may not know. Um, just so you understand that this is not just for music geeks, this is not just for music theory, like uh, down the rabbit hole kind of things. No, what, what, what you can use is very concretely to just spice up things that are based on repetition. Now. Let me show you two song examples. First, there's an artist called Wolfgang Voigt that I want to introduce you to. You may not know him. Um, I don't even know that much about him. But a long time ago, I found this album by him called Studio One. And this album is like a real, a real exercise in minimalism to really see how little changes can be made, but still keep a track engaging and groovy. And so here he uses synthesizers to create a polyrhythm that just goes over a very, very basic percussive beat and it just stays fresh forever. Let me play you a sample from it. You see how you could listen to that almost forever? The drum beat is super basic. It's all just like little glitchy pops and a little sine sub bass that goes whoop, whoop. And there's nothing about it that's particularly, um, particularly genius, but it's super efficient. And the way that this polyrhythm sustains the energy in this makes this loop endlessly listenable. And it doesn't only work on like up synthesizers, like up high synthesizers. It also works on bass. Let me show you another example by Wolfgang Voigt called Green, where it's the bass that's playing a polyrhythm. Let's check this out. Now this one might be harder to hear if you're on small speakers because it's really a sub bass. But if you're on headphones, you'll be able to pick out the very, very lowest frequencies they play a bass line that also is playing a polyrhythm and the rest of the percussion is pretty, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. So again, another example of something that's actually a very standard one bar loop, let's say but there's a polyrhythm that's breaking it up and just, it feels like these two patterns are circling around each other. A third example that's a bit more assertive is by a band called Cast, these two French guys, I believe, and they do this pretty hard techno. 
and let me play you a sample of that. You hear that synthesizer? That's an acid synthesizer, a 303 synthesizer. It's like a really uh, classical, like iconic sound. Um, but the drum loop is really repetitive. Just always the same. But there's this synthesizer that goes bum, 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 bum in a polyrhythm over it. And when the choir behind it, that, that sort of instrumental, the choir and strings behind it, when they change chord, it also changes note. And I don't want to get into too much music theory here, but for those of you who are music theory nerds, very briefly, this track is in A major, right? And it's doing a chord progression that is going from the first to the third chord. From the first to the third chord back to the first, back to the third, back to the first, back to the third. So that's an E major chord, and then it goes to a G sharp minor chord. And just to stay on those chords, that little synthesizer, it switches the semitone from E down to E flat, I believe it is. So it goes E, 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 and then when the chords behind it change, it just moves one down, E flat, E flat, E flat, so that it stays in that chord. But you can do that by ear, but it's actually very simple music theory that they've applied here. If you don't understand fully what I mean by a 1-3 chord progression, check out the music theory video that I posted here a few weeks ago. That should help you understand what a chord progression is, uh, the fact that it's in the E major scale, and that it's doing a 1-3 chord progression. Okay, I diverged there a little bit, but I just wanted to show you sometimes you can either even break down like pretty hardcore techno tracks with some simple music theory and um, you can see the matrix, you know. So, okay, cool, moving on. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you was uh, a track that one of my students sent me and she's working on this uh, as, a, as a sort of a loop in work in progress. It's got a couple of cool ideas in there and she feels like it's kind of missing something to make it flow or to make it more funky. And when I was listening to it, for me, it reminded me actually very much of the percussive loops in Wolfgang Voigt's Studio One. And that immediately, for me, evoked the idea of how about putting a bass line under there that is also doing a little bit of a polyrhythm and make that thing instantly groovy. Um, because I couldn't find any good examples of how to do polyrhythms on the internet, I asked her if I could make this video to help address this. So let's have a look at the project of my student and how we would quickly put a little, uh, a little polyrhythm baseline under there as an example of how to make it potentially groovy. Okay, let's hop into that. Okay, so I've jumped into the student track here. And as you can see, it's laid out. It's about a minute and 20 seconds long. And indeed, um, this is like a work in progress, right? Because it's got a lot of good ideas in it, but uh, it still needs to develop some narrative tension and it misses one or two more elements that make it maybe more uh, memorable and, um, and groovy. So let's have a look. Let me play it for a moment and you'll see what I mean about it resembling a little bit the Studio One tracks and then why we're going to try putting a polyrhythmic bass underneath it. Let's check this out. So you see what's happening here. There's some lovely, um, I find very sensitive sound design where you get these little pads that are kind of sucking, uh, that are going in and out of the percussion sound amazing. But every one bar, everything repeats. Uh, there's nothing that is breaking that monotony of the one bar repet repetition. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one element in there that breaks that, the polyrhythm. Now here's a little side note that I wanna make. Don't put too many polyrhythms into your track. Don't put in two or three polyrhythms because very quickly they're gonna start clashing and the brain can't figure out what patterns it's trying to follow. What is, what is good 
for the brain is to have two patterns. One that's a pretty repetitive one bar loop kind of stuff. And then on the side, one polyrhythm that's breaking that first pattern. And so our brain likes to track how they sort of multiply and divide each other and come back in and out. If you start adding in two or three or four polyrhythms, the brain is like, I can't follow anymore. This is a chaotic mess. Please leave me alone. <laughs> so, okay. So let's put in the one polyrhythm and make it a base. And let's start it from here, just as an example. First, I'll make a MIDI track by clicking here, insert MIDI track. Then I'll create a little MIDI clip. The length doesn't really matter so much because I'm going to be adjusting it down here later anyway. So let's make it insert MIDI clip like this. This is a two bar loop now. Let's put a sound on there that we like. First of all, let, let me just play a random note over here. Uh, let me play it a few times so I can just listen to the, the sound of the bass that we're about to put in. Now, a MIDI track in itself doesn't make any sound because you have to load an instrument onto it first. So let's go into Ableton, find ourselves a good instrument. Now in the Ableton stock plugins, one of the ones that I really recommend is the hip hop bass for this kind of thing. So let's go into Ableton's browser. We go into sounds, we go into bass, the hip hop sub bass. What does that sound like? It sounds like this. Now it sounds like a kind of a bleepy, doesn't sound very loud, but what happens when you play it a couple of octaves down? Well, I'm going to select this, I'm going to select all the notes, and I'm going to hit hold shift on my keyboard and the down arrow. It's going to shift it down an octave. That's already much closer. And that's really the sub bass that I'm looking for. I'm going to play it up an octave higher for those of you with small speakers so that you can really hear what's going on. I don't want this information to get lost, but I think at the end I'm probably going to bump it back down an octave to make it more juicy and low end. So right now this is not a polyrhythm because every one bar, this pattern repeats itself perfectly. You see it up here, the 9, the 10. This is a perfect multiple of one bar. So it's not a polyrhythm yet. But what does it sound like? Oh, in context. Perfect. A bit boring because it doesn't add its special function. Now let's make the length of the loop my favorite one from the previous one, which was 6 18th notes or 3 8th notes. That's this length. And let me stretch that loop out over quite a few bars. Now I'm playing two notes here. Let me deactivate one of these notes by hitting zero on the keypad. And let's see what this sounds like in context. Okay, let's try adding in that second note again, because I think it's a bit too sparse. I think it's not exciting enough. So let's try this. I think that's distracting from the groove. So let's delete this and let's try a faster one. Let's try it. Let's try it every third. That's pretty close to what I was imagining, at least in terms of rhythm. And in terms of sound design, I would probably want to spice it up a little bit more. How could I do that? Well, maybe I can bump it down an octave again. So hold down shift and down. See what it sounds like. If you're on big speakers, this is pretty juicy. If you can feel the bass on this, And interestingly here, it actually loops back and on the downbeat, when this loop starts, it does start again. So because these are uh, these, these two different loops, they do at some point, when you multiply them often enough, they do have a common multiple and then it does kind of restart. 
So in a way, our brain is kind of watching these two series of numbers diverge and converge again. And that's why it's so interesting. And you don't have to understand mathematics to be able to appreciate this because it's, it's your body knows what it's doing. Don't worry about that. So that's all I wanted to go through today. I did not want to go any further workshopping this track. I just wanted to show you how adding one element could spice things up and make it more listenable. Uh, compared to a loop that is static and repeating. And I hope that you saw now in Ableton how simple this is, and you don't have to do rocket science just to be able to uh, apply this in your own tracks. Do remember, only do one polyrhythm. Don't do many polyrhythms because it gets too complicated. And if you're ever looking into um, to getting your knowledge about this a bit deeper, check out some of the other videos on the internet. It is actually quite fascinating how nuanced and theoretical that this gets. Um, but you don't need to understand too much theory to just get started. All right. My name is Oscar. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Do it. And if you'd like to join one of our classes, check us out on www.underdog.brussels. That's where we run boot camps online through Zoom, where you can learn the basics of electronic music production or deep dives where you can get coaching to finish your musical projects and actually bring out projects that are good enough to be signed to a label or to be sent to the radio or whatever you want to do with it. Until then, keep producing and see you next time. Bye bye. Would you like to try making electronic music? That's what we do at Underdog Electronic Music School, based in Brussels. We offer a program called the Bootcamp program, which is designed for absolute beginners who want to start having fun making their own music, but who don't have experience yet doing that. We run online classrooms in small groups where you and a real teacher go through 12 classes where you see from A to Z how to make electronic music and how to start having fun. You can ask any questions at any moment and you can also focus on the genres and artists that you love so that you can start making the music that you are passionate about. Check out the details on www.underdog.brussels and get in touch for a test session or to sign up for one of the classes. So, until we hear from you, see you online.